In this lesson, let's kill two birds with one stone. Now, I want you to open up Pretty Woman, but I do want you to be, for this one, in Bridge, and I don't want you to double-click on her. I want you to right-click on her. Open in Camera Raw. Now, what's a nice JPEG like this doing in a place like ACR, hmm? ACR, Adobe Camera Raw, has some pretty neat things in it that even a JPEG might benefit from before we bring it into Photoshop. Or maybe we know there's something in ACR that we need to do. We don't need to go to Photoshop. Let's talk about sharpening. Now, I'm well aware that Photoshop has some excellent sharpening tools. Of course it does. But so does ACR. So I'm going to click here and go into sharpening. Now, we have a couple of options. Number one is amount. That's how much it sharpens. Now, if I take that to a precarious place, I am sharpening literally everything even places on her skin that I don't want sharpened. So let's back that guy down some. Take it down to about 100 or so for now. Leave it there. Radius is how much it sharpens once it knows what to sharpen. So if we take that up, watch what happens. Either there, all the way up that way, or down this way. Let's take that to about a 1. That's about where I want it. Detail is how much detail in the sharpened areas and we can take that up or down. And I think I want that about, say, there, 25. Now, the problem is, if I turn that off, it's still sharpening areas I don't want it to sharpen, like in here. That's where masking comes in. Now, watch over here in these areas as I begin to increase the masking. Now, I'm holding down the Alt key. That's the Option key on a Mac, Alt in window, so I can see the mask. The black and white areas control what areas get the adjustment. Black means don't adjust. Notice her face? Now let me take my finger off that key so you can watch it. As I bring it up, it softens her facial features, well not her features, the skin, and at the same time leaves the adjustment on her eyes, her nose, her lips, her hair, exactly what I want. So sharpening in ACR is pretty cool because you have this built-in kind of like artificial intelligence mask saying, don't sharpen this, sharpen that. So I like what I've done. I don't need to go to Photoshop. I just want to save the image. If I click Open Image, I'm opening in Photoshop. If I click Done, I'm going back to Bridge. But we have one more option we haven't looked at, and that's Save Image over here. Go ahead and click that button. Destination. Where do you want to save it? Same location? Fine. Somewhere else? Choose it. File naming. That's the name, Pretty Woman. But if you want to add something like a serial number or date, it's up to you. Here's the extension. DNG, JPEG, TIFF, PSD. If we go to DNG, let's start with that one. Digital negative. Now this is more for the raw file than it is, say, for a JPEG but it allows you to save raw images in a proprietary format that's good for Adobe, and they'll always support it. We talked about that when we talked about preferences. So you can save it compatible-wise in an earlier version, which I don't usually do, because when you go backward up the ladder like this, basically what you're doing is you're losing features. So unless I have to, I would leave that there. The JPEG preview, I go full size. We're talking, and pretend this is a raw image, we're talking about images that might be 60, 70 megabytes. What's another 100K to get a full-size preview? I go full-size on that. Fast load data is about 10K. Why not? I never lossy compress my images on RAW. That defeats the whole purpose as far as I'm concerned. And if this were a RAW image, this would not be grayed out. What is that? Some people still want the original image. They go, ah, okay, Andy, I know that the raw image has got all the stuff in it. And I know Adobe said that the DNG has all that stuff in it too, but you know what? I don't know if I'm sure of that. And I think I want both the DNG and the raw. Now you're going to double the file size if you do that, but it's up to you. That's DNG. Next one is uh, JPEG. Now the JPEG format is lossy compression. If we go to quality here and take it down, say, to a 1 to 4, and you can change the number over here too, you can even limit the file size if you want to do it that way. The image will get smaller, and at the same time, the quality will suffer. It's up to you. That's JPEG. TIFF, Tagged Image File Format. Basically, you have one major option here, and that is compression. I don't compress if I'm storing. Now, I learned the hard way. I had some zipped images back 125 years ago, 
and the zip format that I used is no longer supported by zip on zip. I can't open them. I'm not a big fan of zipping images if I'm going to store them for a long period of time. I'll take the file size over the possibility of not being able to open them. If this image had transparency, it would ask if we want to save it. And then the final one is Photoshop. And basically, you can add the metadata. You could do that on all of them. And you want to remove the location information. You don't want people to know where it's going to be. Those are your options. So we can correct this image, work with this image, do things to it, and never ever go to Photoshop by clicking Save Image. It's that easy.